Imagine this, a 30 million hectare country dispersed into more than 7,000 islands with almost 21 million hectares of forest, home to over 50,000 different plants and animal species, with more than 5,000 of these species being unique to this country. A biodiversity hotspot, a crown jewel in a world of unique landscapes, species, and ecosystems. Pound for pound, one of the most unique and naturally resourced countries in the world, with the most species diversity in the smallest land area possible. A hundred years ago, this was the Philippines. In a span of less than a hundred years, the Philippines has depleted its total land area of over 50% of its original forest cover, from 21 million to just a little more than 6 million in 2010. There are a lot of factors that have contributed to the rampant loss of the Philippine forests, most of which were brought upon by us, humans. For a country that has a history rooted in its ecological riches, it seems that most of its people have forgotten how integral forests and trees are in their very own identity and culture. This is all the more made evident by the fact that the country's capital itself is bereft of green spaces. The lack of green spaces or even simply a healthy tree population in a city directly affects its citizens. Not only do trees provide shade and help improve breathability, trees also aid in decreasing the urban heat index. The measurement of how much heat is emitted by the city's buildings, houses, and roads. This then poses the question. If the country's very own capital does not recognize the value of trees and green spaces, what can ordinary citizens like you and me do to help change this? I am here to offer a simple solution. The planting and maintenance of native trees throughout the city. But before we talk about that, we have a special message from the Philippine Eagle Foundation's Reforestation Officer, Camila Naputo. Hi! I'm Camila and I'm a Forest Restoration Officer for the Philippine Eagle Foundation. In my line of work, I deal with a lot of trees and terrestrial environments that need rehabilitating. One of these are urban spaces and I think that trees, or green spaces in general, should be incorporated in all urban developments. We all know that trees serve a lot of ecological functions. Aside from the obvious one where they give us the oxygen that we breathe, they also provide a favorable habitat for urban wildlife. They enable various birds, small mammals, and insects to live harmoniously with us city dwellers. In especially polluted areas, they help clean the air and make it a healthier place for us to live in. In the context of climate change, they sequester the carbon that our human activities emit, like commuting and the use of electricity. Aren't trees just incredibly cool? It makes me very proud of the work I'm doing. And in fact, one of our restoration sites is considered an urban green space. The Ali Davao Carbon Forest is found in the heart of Davao City. Its entrance is actually right beside a highway. The area lost its original swampy forest to agriculture, livestock racing, and urban developments. But we're slowly nurturing it back into a lush secondary forest, so wish us luck. I hope this inspires you to do your part in advocating for more green spaces in your city and promoting sustainable development. Bye! Camila's work at the Ali Carbon Forest is definitely a blueprint into making our cities, environment, and lives sustainable and better. And though we might not all be able to plant forests, we can always keep in mind that the planting of trees can help change our lives in the city. So, stay tuned for next week where I will be talking about the 5 best trees that we can plant all over the city or even in our parks. <laughs> See you!